Hi and welcome to today's webinar. Um, it's on the topic of what is business analysis. So my name is Simon Breton and I'm going to be your host for today. Uh, I am a business analysis tutor and a course developer and hopefully um, I'll be able to bring you some value and knowledge and, and ultimately answer this question, uh, what is business analysis? So today we're going to be giving you a, an overview of what business analysis is. Um, before we get into this topic, let's go over a few housekeeping items first. Uh, if you have any questions during this presentation, please use the chat function um, that is in the system to submit your post or your question. You can also submit your question on one of our social media platforms. Uh, that IT Online Learning provide. If you use the hashtag BA Episode 1 uh, along with your post or your question, uh, hopefully we will do our best to address these questions at the end of the webinar. So we're going to be going through a, f a few of the following topics today and ultimately what we hope for is all of these topics will culminate in answering the question what is business analysis? The topic, these topics are organizations and their challenges, business or IT problems and solutions, how do business analysts solve organizational problems, and finally we'll answer the question what is business analysis? So the first topic is organizations and their challenges. Okay, so it's very easy for us to just take a look around and realize that there are many organizations in the world today. They are scattered throughout the world, um, ranging from organizations that uh, are formed by the governments, they are selling something, or they are um, helping some charity, uh, if we if we look at this this image here, we can see just a few of the well known ones. Uh, we have Barclays Bank, uh, we have the BBC, we have DHL, we have Netflix, we have Samsung, and we also have McDonald's. All of these organisations here have a commercial or a business purpose or objective, but. We also have organizations that fall into a non-commercial or a non-profit category. So if we have a look in this image, we have the British Transport Police, we have the World Health Organization, the NHS, the World Wildlife Fund, we have Greenpeace, and we have the RSPCA as examples. But from all of these examples, regardless of if they are a commercial or non-commercial enterprise, we can see that there are a vast amount of organizations out there. Organizations are ultimately just a group of individuals that have formed to fulfill some purpose or objective. Uh, they've, they've formally formed an organization, defined a name, and set up all the structures in order to get the business as usual or the operations within the organization working effectively to produce these outcomes that they are intending to achieve. So um, all of these organizations that we've shown you here in these examples have their own individual or unique objectives or purpose. So we know that some of them have a uh, it could be a charity, a non-profit such as um, the World Wildlife Fund, which is helping to um, you know save endangered animals, or we have you know sort of also non-profit organisations that may have been set up by the government, uh, you know that fulfil some form of a medical perspective or uh, rather a purpose in a country. So. You know, we have the organizations such as McDonald's or, or um, Samsung or what have you. You know, all of those have, have a business perspective and they ultimately have a goal of um, making money um, by selling something or providing some form of a service. 
But regardless of what their, their objectives or their intended outcomes are, um, we know that there are a vast amount of organizations out there in the world. And for all of these organizations to, to keep afloat, and keep these operations working, you know, all the cogs within, within the, this, this organization or this machine working towards achieving their objectives or fulfilling their purpose, they need to be carefully managed and controlled. So this means that the executives, the people that have the, 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 the high-level governance, they are the people that are the decision-makers. They need to be making the right decisions in order for the organization to continue being a healthy enterprise and, and continue working as it should. You can almost see an organization as though it were a machine. Um, if we, uh, the, the, the engine inside our cars, if we don't keep servicing the engine and we don't um, give it the... Uh, the, the items that it needs, such as water and oil and, and fuel and, and brake fluid and such, if, if we don't give it what it needs and, and look after it, it ultimately will fail and it will break down and will stop fulfilling its purpose and then be thrown away. This is the same for organizations. They need to be carefully managed, controlled. They need to be serviced. They need to be provided with the right resources such as staff, equipment, um, uh, you know, whatever the resources that need to be supplied to it need to be done at the right level in the right amounts for it to be a healthy organization. Organizations also need to be following the right processes and be aligned to um, the overarching strategy that or the overarching strategy of the organization also needs to be healthy and the organization needs to be aligned to the strategy so that all the processes, the, the mechanics that work inside the organization are working at a very um, effective level and the whole entity as an ecosystem is actually um, is functioning at its best. So... Um, each and every organization we can say has been formed at some point in the past. So in the, you know, at some point someone would have had an idea or got a group of people together and then um, ultimately defined what the organization is going to be and what it's going to do. And then also defined how they're going to be doing that. So the how is the strategy. It's the plan of what they're going to be doing to achieve their goals. The, um, the who are the people, all the staff and, and the executives that make the decisions. Um, okay, so the organization, when it's formed at some point in the past, it will, over time, it will grow. It will become larger. It will become more complex over time. Um, you can imagine that all of these organizations, these examples that we've spoken about, at some point in time, there were just a few people that had an idea. Um, and during the point from which an organization starts and to the point that is continuing to exist, this life cycle of the organization, it's inevitable that it will encounter challenges. So it'll at some point, whether it be the hurdles that they have to encounter in the beginning, it'll, regardless of how big the, the organization is or how small it is or how long it's been operating, it is just a known that organizations will be faced with numerous challenges along the way. So these challenges um, ultimately can come from within the organization so within the environment of the organization, we can say it's within the organization's control, such as um, a system within the organization that is being used may have become outdated. They may need to replace a system with something else. Uh, one of the processes that the organization or some of the processes that the organization is using, such as the staff that are following a, a routine every single day, 
in order to produce a specific outcome um, may fail or may become obsolete at some point in time. Um, and even the strategies or the staff that are working for the organization could also change over time. But all of this, all of these are examples of um, the internal environment of the organization. So challenges can come from within the organization. We can also say that challenges can come from outside of the organization's environment or outside of its range of control such as, uh, let's say, a political change. We can imagine an organization that may have been operating in, in various countries, a franchise, for example, um, may at some point, have, the country may have gone through some political change and which may have, uh, dis which may have affected the organization to some degree or another. Uh, we can imagine an organization um, that was supporting a military function of the country and at a political level maybe they may have defined that the budget for that area of military research or whatever it is may be best spent elsewhere and then the funds may have been diverted into some other aspect of um, the country. So that's an example of a political change there could also be legal changes. Um, a very good example of this is recently, or not re not so recently now, but in the recent past, these new GDPR laws have come into play, the General Data Protection Laws. And before these GDPR laws, there was a lot of organizations out there that were that had a free reign on their, the way that they marketed um, their services and products, and the way that they, um, the way that they stored their customer data, so they could very easily just get people's information, their names and addresses and contact numbers and things, and and share this information. Um, so there wasn't a a legal, uh, there wasn't a law that was governing that aspect of what an organisation could do with their data and how they could reach out to customers. But you can imagine all of these organizations that had set up all of their marketing functions based on this willy-nilly um, you know, marketing, uh, marketing streams and marketing campaigns that just sent out information and stored people's information and gathered people's information now had to be governed by GDPR laws, which said that you very specifically need to store information um, within these grounds of control and you can't just reach out to people um, that haven't ultimately allowed you to reach out to them before. So this is an example of a legal change that forms a category of external environmental changes or external environmental um, challenges that an organization could face. But these are things that are outside of the range of an organization's control. They can't do anything about it. All they have to do is adapt to this change and, and change what they have within their control in order to make themselves better uh, or more competitive at what they do. So another big external factor, an external environmental challenge that an organization could face is a technological one. So we all know that the world is changing rapidly in terms of technology um, within all areas of um, business and in all areas of our lives we're using technology more and more and more and these technologies are evolving and, and very very quickly um, over the years and over the months they, they older technologies are moving out and new technologies are coming into play so this means that organizations need to be able to adapt or change very rapidly to these technological changes in order to um, survive and to be quite good at what they do. So whatever these challenges may be, they can manifest in the organization as problems or they can create situations that drive the need for the organization to change and improve. So 
we're going to now move on to th that that covers the first topic so which is organizations and their challenges we know now that organizations have challenges let's move on to the next topic which is business and IT problems and solutions so all of these problems changes or improvements can either be from a business or organizational perspective or it can also be from a IT or technological perspective these days the challenges problems issues that businesses um, face or even us the challenges that we face are more and more from an IT perspective due to the world relying on technolo technology more and more it's very easy to find stories of many companies that have in the past found success only to fail as things have changed around them over time and they've failed to keep up with these business challenges or technological changes along the way so we'll look at a few examples here um, a very good example to use was a company called Kodak. It was a company that was leading the market by manufacturing and selling uh, photography equipment and cameras. They were operating successfully for decades, I think since the 1950s or, or 1960s or so. And they were the top of their game. Everyone knew them. They were a household name. And due to changing technologies, and the failure to innovate and keep up with these with the technological competition they ultimately had to close the company in 2012 and the reason for this was you, we can look at it from multiple perspectives we know that um, the equipment that was the the technology that was going into the manufacturing of these cameras was changing and evolving quite rapidly and due to the fact that they weren't keeping up with their research and development and 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 um, developing new technologies and putting these into into their their products it meant that they just couldn't keep up with their competition and they had to fail and if you think of it at a strategic level those executives that were in in charge of the company that ultimately had the the control to make decisions about the company obviously made the wrong choices along the way or well, they didn't have the right information and they didn't have the right solutions in order to solve the problems the challenges and improve the company in order for it to continue being a success so that's a very good example of a te technological change that happened which ultimately allowed a company as large as Kodak to fail there's another good example which came from um, a company called Blockbuster. Blockbuster was a was a company that um, in the past when we didn't have digital video formats we had VHS tapes and it was a very um, it was a common activity for people around the world to go into video rental and businesses and be able to rent out videos in order to watch films that were fresh uh, that were new on the market blockbuster was a huge vhs or, or tape uh, video tape um, a rental chain company and they were extremely popular people knew them throughout the whole world and they were they were operating as a, also operating as a, as a success for many years but they also couldn't keep up with technological changes. We all know that we've come a long way since the video tape, which moved to um, digital video or DVDs, and then ultimately formed into the, NA, uh, the streaming services such as Netflix. Now, if we think of this in terms of just a few decades that the, this, this has changed, the blockbuster failed to adapt to the changes from a technological perspective they decided to keep doing what they were doing in order to um, you know continue the, the existence of the company it may have been hard for them to actually make decisions in order to adapt to these new changes but if they had done so they may have been the Netflix of today if they have ad had adopt adapted and evolved over time 
if they had known, if they had been provided um, with the right information, if they had a consultant that had been able to be hired at that point of time to come into them and to see what was happening and present solutions to them, they may not be um, in the situation that they're in today, which is ultimately non-existent. They have moved into the history books of a company that used to exist but no longer exists today. So these two examples of Kodak and Blockbuster are very good examples of technological changes that happened, which ultimately challenged an organization, presented problems. These organizations failed to adapt and ultimately had to close their doors. Now, at this stage, we need to also know that challenges can also come from a non-IT or technological perspective. Challenges can also come from an organizational or business perspective that is not related to IT. And to a large degree, business analysts um, need to look at both of these perspectives. Um, a lot of the time, business analysts will be told that they are primarily focused on IT. And yes, this is the case because IT is to a large degree, um, the, 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 IT to a large degree are are presented as solutions to problems and our IT is so embedded in our world today that that is often the case. But we also need to know that there could also be challenges and problems or areas for, for improvement that could come from just a business or an organizational perspective that is not linked to IT whatsoever. A business analyst ultimately needs to look at the organization from a holistic perspective which is looking at it um, from, from every angle, from every perspective, from every viewpoint, and defining how to make an organization as healthy as it can be. What are the things that are making an organization unhealthy? Which are the areas of the organization that need to be resolved or fixed? So um, we all know that if, if we have a particular problem with our body, um, you know, it may be manifesting. We may develop a cough, um, which, which may present a deeper issue inside our bodies. We need to address that cough and go to a, 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 a GP or general practitioner, try and define what this problem is and, and help us get, get back to a state of good health. This is also true for organizations. So if we, if in, in this example, if we, or this analogy, if we happen to, to leave this cough or we happen to leave this issue that's manifesting in our body, it could actually present itself in a much a greater health issue or we could get to a point where we could get extremely sick. So um, an organization is the same. We need to look at all perspectives of an organization and, and make sure and and look at if there are any improvements that can be made, make an organization stronger, make an organization healthier by finding problems, resolving those problems. And this will hopefully keep the organization afloat and allow it to exist for many, many more years than, than what it would usually, would usually do so. So we're going to look at just one more example, and this is an example which is a company that had more of a business problem and not a technological problem. And this is the company Pan Am or Pan American Airways. They were an airline company that were a great innovator and they became extremely success, uh, an extremely successful airline company in the United States. Um, however, at a corporate level, there was a lot of mismanagement and there were also the company also faced regulatory changes and due to these changes that came from outside of the organization and within the organization but had nothing to do with IT because ultimately the company existed many many years ago um, the, the, the company had to close its doors and ultimately failed so we know now that um, Companies have got 
many challenges. From all these examples, we can see that companies have challenges. These challenges manifest themselves in problems and issues and also areas where an organization can improve to make itself stronger. So where does a business analyst come into play? What has all of this got to do with business analysis, you may be asking? So this, we then now move on to the next section of this, uh, this episode, this webinar, which is how do business analysts actually solve organizational problems? Because you may now have an idea of what the purpose of business analysis, uh, analysis is, what the purpose of a business analyst is, and that is ultimately to solve business problems, to look at a business and see what can be done to make it stronger, make it improve, find a problem and, and uh, be able to resolve that problem, ultimately help the organization stay healthy for, for a much longer period of time and allow it to survive. So how does a business analyst actually do this? So first of all, let us summarize what the job of a business analyst is. So we've said that the ultimate job of a business analyst is to find problems or areas for improvement in an organization or a business. And this can be from an IT or a business perspective. Now, these problems, um, these, these problems may present you know, areas for improvement or even may present solutions. So the next stage after a problem has been found here is to be able to find what the solution is to this problem. The business analyst will find out what the solution to this problem is and then propose these problems or indicate how improvements can be made to the organization. A business analyst will then move to another category of work or, or a, an overview category of this, this type of work, business analysis work, and that is to define what the solution is so that the company can make a decision, can um, execute the solution as a project, develop the solution, and be in a state where it'll be a lot stronger and hopefully resolve the problem that it was um, that had been found in the first place. All of the stuff that a business analyst would do here will result in a positive change to the organization. And it makes, so all of this would result in a positive change to the organization and will make it much stronger. It will make it way more likely that it will survive in the future and not end up in the trash heap of companies that failed in time. So we can say that the ultimate purpose of business analysis is to make an organization or a business stronger by helping an organization change from a business or a technological perspective. So many have actually stated that the role of a business analyst is just the interface or the bridge between an IT and uh, the business or the organization in question. We can say that this is true to a large degree because business analysts are often hired um, on assignments where there is a need to align a business to some form of a technological or IT change. But at this point, we must also understand that business analysis is also concerned with improvements that are not specifically related to IT2. <clears throat> so we can look at an example such as where a business analyst could be providing a service such as analyzing the organization's strategy or its processes so that, so that improvements can be made in these areas too. So now that we have stated that <clears throat> or now that we have said all of this, I can hear you asking, how does a business analyst do all of this? How does a business analyst find problems that are in an organization? How does a business find areas for improvement? How do they um, then move to a stage where they present solutions to an organization? And how do they then move to a stage where they have the ability to define the solution in order for the organization to 
um, <clears throat> to grow and execute these solutions as projects. If we look at it from this perspective, it looks like a lot of work. And to a large degree, yes, there is quite a lot of work. But business and uh, business analysis uses methodologies, or we can say it uses methods and techniques that have been set up for analysts to be able to methodically look at specific areas of business analysis work or whichever assignment that they've been given, use these techniques to be able to uncover um, or, or to be able to fulfill their purpose and ultimately um, uh, fill their contract and pro provide a service. So we also may be thinking, why, how would a business analyst do this if they don't have in-depth knowledge of an industry or a business in question? And this is because they, have, they look at it from a methodical perspective. Um, where they don't always need to have specific industry knowledge or be a subject matter expert or have um, knowledge of the business domain in question. So all of this being said, I'm just going to put a little clause in here. We know that we know what we've said is that business analysts can use methods and techniques to assist them to fulfill this purpose, to find solutions, define solutions and propose solutions for organizations. But the, we also need to understand that, like we have said before, if we have a problem with our bodies, we will, um, our bodies will manifest the problem from some form of a symptom, a cough or a fever or, or such, or, or um, for failing eyesight or, or something to do with our ears or whatever, or pain, this will then result in us going to a general practitioner. The general practitioner would have a broad knowledge of um, medicine and health, and they'll then be able to sort of establish what is wrong with you. But if they find out that there's a specific um, problem that they can't resolve, they then res refer you to a specialist. So this is where this clause of business analysis comes into play here. You get business analysts that are very specifically um, focused on a, sp a specialized area of, of, of a business or of business analysis work. So we have what is known as strategy analyst, uh, analysts, who are business analysts that are predominantly focused on looking at the strategy of an organization and finding out what they can do to make the business strategy better. We also have business analysts that are systems analysts, which are predominantly focused on looking at the systems or from an IT or solution perspective. So they may not be so involved in the strategy or the processes or other areas of business analysis work. You also have analysts that are specialists. They are domain experts. They have gathered enough knowledge of a specific business domain in order to be very effective at what they do. But that being said, a business analyst can be seen as a general practitioner where they have enough tools and techniques to look at an organization holistically and be able to find the problems and be able to fulfill or carry out the services that they provide. So um, we can say that uh, a, a business analyst, uh, you know, if, if, if an analyst has enough business knowledge, um, skills and techniques, they should be able to carry out the work needed by the organization. So that being said, look let us look at what a business analyst actually does. So um, this, will, this will help us to complete our understanding of what business analysis is. It must first be understood that there's a large emphasis on the use of techniques in business analysis. But the trick in business analysis is knowing which techniques or which knowledge or methods or processes to use or groups of these techniques and processes for the context of the work that is being done. That's where the trick of business analysis comes into play. 
if they've been given a specific assignment to fulfill a specific area of work, such as uncover a problem or improve a business strategy, um, provide do stakeholder analysis, all of these areas of business analysis services that a business analyst is, is um, expected to provide, there are a range of techniques that can be used for all of these areas in order to fulfill the role of a business analyst. So we can we look at this this little model that we have here, um, which which sort of gives us the common process or overview process of business analysis work. You may um, in within further business analysis studies um, sort of encounter models and um, methodologies or that that cover a more broader range of what business analysis is. But this this little um, process here is just indicating um, a, a category. Each of these three these these three process areas here is indicating a category of business analysis work, and within these categories, there's a there's a whole bunch of other analysis work that can be done. But this little model here will give you a good overview of what a business analyst does. So we can see that we first have a problem. Or, or we can say that the organization has a problem or needs improvement. And this can be either from a business or an IT perspective. So the business, once the problem has been found by the analyst, the, um, the analyst then needs to propose a solution to the problem. And once the solution has been proposed and a decision has been made, the solution needs to be defined. So the actual, um, whatever the the decision or whatever the analyst has proposed to be the resolution to the problem will be chosen and the analyst needs to be able to define exactly what the solution is to the point where a developer or a project can be executed using the information that the analyst has used. Okay, so here an analyst would use various techniques to investigate the business. Um, so, so in this first area of work, so to find a problem or an area for improvement, an, al an analyst, what we have said, would use various techniques to investigate the business situation. This is one of the services that a business analyst would provide. So they'd ultimately be contracted to an organization to have a look at what this problem is or find out what um, could be done to resolve a particular problem. A, 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 an organization sometimes knows what the problem is. They sometimes don't know what the problem is. The, it, it may not even have manifested as a problem yet, but just be an area where the business can, um, can improve. So an organization may just say, come in and have a look at our organization, investigate and see what can be done to improve the business. And this can be done from, a, from an IT perspective or from a business perspective. So from an IT perspective, the um, analyst would sort of maybe look at the systems that are being used by the, um, the systems that are being used by the business staff such as a, um, a specific program that is used to store data and uh, process um, uh, you know, purchases, company purchases and such. These systems, all these systems that are being used, the, the, the problem may actually lie within these, these IT systems that are being used by the organization. And the analyst would then be able to investigate these IT or business problems, uncover what the problems are, get to the root causes and see what can be done about it. And um, ultimately then be able to look at, look at um, all these different decisions that can be made and be presented to the decision makers of the organization to say that, is this a good choice? Is that a good choice? Is this a good choice? Or this one would be good in this context and this one would be good in a different context, and this one wouldn't be so good. This, this solution may seem good, but it's actually not. 
So this is where the second category of business analysis work comes into, um, into play. But first, let's look in a, at, at an example of how a business analyst would investigate a business in, in such a context of business analysis work. So a business analysis could use, uh, could arrange or build a workshop to speak to a group of people that work for a company such as the staff, uh, to ultimately uncover information about an area of the business or discuss problems that they may be facing. So generally, a business analyst um, would, would be talking to a lot of people that work for the organization or, or are in the realms of work that surround the organization. And their, their goal with this investigatory um, analysis stage is to draw out information, draw out data that can sort of guide them towards where the problem or the improvement may lie. And this actually requires them to talk to a lot of people. So they, use, they have to use these communication or facilitation techniques in order to talk to people, to draw out information. And this could be in the form of a workshop. So they may need to talk to a larger group of people that work for a specific department. In that department, they may have some um, sort of activities in the workshop that are there to, that are specifically designed to uncover the problem. So they may have a series of questions or activities or games or such that are there to, to, to to guide those those staff members in order to to get them to talk about the problem and get to a decision on what what is what is actually wrong or what can be done about it so there are other techniques where a business analyst could be talking to members of staff and and investigating and and ex extrapolating data from from people and this could be in the form of observation techniques such as what is known as shadowing, where people would, a, a business analyst would go into an organization to the places of where the, um, to where the staff actually work and actually see how they do their work and let them discuss what they do and discuss the pain points and discuss uh, to see um, which which areas um, of their processes or what they do, the steps that they do can be improved. So um, usually these members of staff would sort of like indicate various pain points or um, would indicate how things can be done more efficiently in these sessions. The analyst would then sort of um, sort of probe them further, you know, for, to extract more information on these problematic areas and, and get to a point where they've got enough data or information about this area of the business in order to decide exactly what the problem is. So um, these investigatory techniques are extremely useful um, to a business analyst. They, they ultimately talk to a lot of people about problems and about areas of the business. Um, and often this is from a perspective of IT. So they'll come in <clears throat> and they'll look at how specific users of a system will, will carry out their jobs, you know, how they'd click, how they'd log in, how they'd store data and such and, and discuss what problems they have with the system. So, um, during this investigation stage of, of business analysis, um, information can also be taken from, for, you know, it doesn't have to be taken specifically from talking to people, but analysts may also uh, ask for documentation and reports and such where they, can, where they can extract data and information about a company or the problem. So um, they may be asking executives about these reports and such, and then <clears throat> afterwards they would they would then analyze these reports and and uh, data data lists and such, and and see what they can gather from this. So the analyst will use this information from this investigation stage, you know, looking for the problem about uh, all this information that they have gathered about the business, analyze it 
and use additional techniques to analyze it, model it, map it out, and, and uh, which will hopefully uncover the problem. So they could use uh, techniques such as process modeling to understand how the business works, uh, such as mapping out exactly what what the staff do or what they do on a system and how information is passed between all these roles. This would also help to sort of allow the business analyst to look at these areas of the business from a much more holistic or an overview perspective, which will help them understand the business and get to the bottom of the problem. They may use techniques such as root cause analysis, which is a technique to get to the bottom of a problem because <clears throat> we we often find that problems that manifest themselves are on the surface level. So people will discuss these problems um, as they present themselves to business staff or to an organization. And they haven't actually had the time or, or had techniques in order to analyze this problem to find out what the real cause of the problem actually is. Because an analyst might dig deeper into what the problem is and find out that there is a much deeper meaning behind this problem and that problem needs to be resolved before it resolves all the other problems. So um, this investigation stage will may also have this uh, a series of sessions or uh, you know it will have an iterative approach where an analyst may extract information, analyze the information, have to go back to validate that information, and ultimately um, get to a point where this constant back and forth of discussing information will, will identify what the problem actually is. So we'll use a little example here to allow you to um, sort of help uh, understand what, how this takes place. And we can think of a business, we, whatever the business may be called, um, Blue Tech or, or something like that. Um, let's say it's, an, it's, a, it's a company that sells products from a catalog. And the, the company has a problem with their customer services department. They've started reporting that the organization is getting a large amount of customer complaints. So this is the problem at a surface level. And a business analyst, they, they, they ultimately haven't been able to identify what this problem is. And a business analyst has been hired to get to the bottom of this problem or to the root cause of this problem. So the analyst then sets up a series of meetings with the people that work in the customer services department. And also the managers too. And the managers have simply just given them a report that has produced the number of complaints in the customer services depart department. They haven't actually been able to get any information from that. But when the analyst speaks to these customer services staff or, or representatives, they find out that the customers are, that the customers themselves have been complaining about not receiving response messages or notifications from these customer service representatives. And the customer services representatives themselves um, hadn't actually known this because it's ultimately not their job to investigate this problem or find out why this is the case. Their job ultimately has just been to use the system to reach out to the customers and, and try to provide them with the information that they need. And the customers tend to not complain about specific areas of a business such as its processes and the way that it does, it manages and runs things. So they wouldn't have the tendency to actually reach out to the organization and actually really um, help them to identify the problem. It'll only be when a business analyst is finally hired to talk to all these people, use techniques, possibly um, use surveys and questionnaires to send it out to the customers and the customer representatives to finally find out or uncover that, that potentially the IT system 
that the customer services staff were using to send messages to the customers was defective and had been failing to send customers messages potentially 50% of the time. So we can imagine that this in itself would have presented a major problem for the organization and they may have not have found this problem um, over many years which would have decreased customer satisfaction which have filtered out into reviews and ultimately uh, would have resulted in lost sales and revenue over time. So this investigation that a business analyst would have done here um, would have been extremely valuable. And we can see how that they did this is that they used techniques to communicate, extract information and look into really what the cause of these problems are or where uh, the business or the organization could improve. So we just need to know though that this is just one area of business analysis work and the scope of business analysis work is, is really ultimately vast. Business analysis assignments can present themselves in a number of ways but an analyst just needs to use, um, it needs to be able to know which techniques are best for which context or which situation that uh, is needed by the organization or needed by the business analyst to resolve a, a specific issue. So, and we also need to know that this, this common overview model that we're using here is just the common stages of business analysis work. So um, we can say that we, um, we can now move on to the next part of business analysis work or the next stage in this process, this overview process. But before we move on, we must know that the role of a business analyst is extremely varied. An analyst could even be assigned to work that is outside the scope of this model um, and outside the scope of business analysis work that is represented here. An organization, for example, may ask an analyst um, to look at the strategy uh, from, a, from a corporate level, which doesn't have much to do with this specific process. But that being said, you know, for us to understand business analysis work, let's move on. And we can see that the next stage ultimately, or the next um, service that a business analyst must fulfill is to um, propose solutions to this problem that they've uncovered. So you might ask yourself here, like, how would a business analyst be able to do this? How would a business analyst be able to know what is the best thing to do for the situation? And an analyst <clears throat> will then once again use techniques and extrapolate data and information from the relevant people to gather, um, or they would, they would gather data, they would process this data or analyze it, use calculations, models, techniques and such to be able to get a perspective on the situation which will ultimately help them to define what the solution is. They would then also look at these various solutions that they're going to be presenting to the organization and define which one is the most feasible or they would justify each um, chosen solution from various perspectives, such as a financial perspective or from a technological perspective. Um, here, a, a business analyst would also have various techniques at their disposal to do this. This stage, we can almost, um, we can say that it culminates in the production of what is known as a business case. A business case is a document or an idea um, that is usually produced by business analysts and is a, a large area of business analysis work. And the business case is ultimately just a list of solutions or proposed solutions or avenues that a business can take in order to resolve a specific problem. And an analyst will also look at all of these solutions from a perspective of risk and a perspective of um, feasibility and such and, and then define and present these solutions to the executives 
or the decision makers of the organization and tell them which of these solutions are the best ones to move forward, which ones are going to cost the most, which ones are going to cost the least. Sometimes even a business analyst will propose to do nothing. So um, this is ultimately the purpose of a business case, and this is something that a business analyst must produce. They would sometimes produce it in a form of a document, uh, a PDF document or a PowerPoint presentation. They may go up in, in front of a group of stakeholders or executives, the decision makers of the company, and ultimately uh, you know, go through each solution and show them all the data, possibly in graphs and models and such, which will, uh, will, will, will ultimately... Um, provide evidence or justification for taking a specific course of action. So this is another area of what business analyst analysis would, would do. So in our example, you know, uh, with the customer service representative's problem, we could almost imagine that the business analyst would have, um, you know, spoken to the customer services representative's uh, they would have spoken to developers and such and ultimately defined or proposed that the best way forward may have been to build a new solution, build a new software, or to fix the defects within the software that they currently have. If, from a technological perspective, that those defects could not be fixed or the software had become outdated, then the best solution would have been to build a new software system for those customer representatives so that the, the customers themselves won't experience this problem of not receiving messages 50% of the time. And potentially they, the, the business analyst may also have said that there's an option to do nothing and they can just continue the way that they're doing things and move forward as such. The decision makers will ultimately be able to there should be should ultimately be able to take the business case from what the business analyst has produced and clearly and make a clear decision on what is best for the organization at this stage so um, we can say that it could be found that the in the current system um, we can say then that you know we can now moving to the next stage of business analysis work or our overview stage and and that is now the executives have decided what the best way forward is they've said that they've got enough budget to build a new system and this is what they want to do and now the next area of business analysis work would ultimately to, to be to to define the solution and we, we could be thinking at this stage and to say that surely a business analyst doesn't have enough IT or technological knowledge to be able to do this, to be able to, to build a system to the point where it can be built and developed by um, some software developers or such. But, but yes, that is the case. The business analysts can build, can use techniques models and and such to get the point of a even an IT system to a point where it can be handed over to a development team. So here they would carry out uh, a range of services such as which requirements engineering. Requirements engineering is a huge area of business analysis work. What they would ultimately be doing here is defining the requirements or the features of the new system. So they, they may go out and talk to um, the users of the system, such as the customer representatives, the customers, and understand how the, the current system works and define what they need to take from the old system into the new system and also what they want to add into the new system and what they want to remove. This will ultimately um, culminate in a document that is being produced by the business analyst, which is a requirements document, which is a list of all these features that the new system, uh, all these new features that need to be built into the new system. 
In an agile project, they sometimes use different terminology. They call it a use case or user story. Um, but ultimately, the requirements are just um, a, a small statement that is saying that the system needs to do this, the system needs to do, to do that. It needs to store this information. It needs to allow customers to be able to log in. It needs to be allow um, admin users to do such. So the, so the, um, the analyst would also look at this document and refine it and get it to a point where it it doesn't have any problems or it doesn't have any duplicates or errors so so that the developers can clearly know what the new system must do another part of this work in defining the new solution or the new system is also building models so they may build prototypes so they could potentially uh, lay out how the system is going to be used from a functional or from a, a user interface or user experience perspective. They then could, during this whole process of requirements engineering or prototyping or building models for the new system, they would be going backwards and forwards between people, communicating with people to validate that what they have defined for the new system to do is the correct thing. So another area of this work is building the models. They may be building UML entity, entity relationship models or use case models, which are basically system models that can be used by the developer that it maps out the way that the new system, uh, uh, maps out how the new system will function and work from a user perspective or from a system perspective. So these are all the techniques that a business analyst would use to be able to define the new system. So they'd ultimately produce a, a, a folder or a, a, a group of documents that the developers can use to clearly understand how the new system is to be built. And to that degree, this is where the range of business an analysis work does start dipping over into um, an IT perspective. Business analysts don't necessarily know, need to know exactly how to code or build a, uh, a program or a software solution, but they, they need to be able to use techniques to be able to map out the new system and be able to show clearly how the new system should work. So this is a, this is a large part of business analysis work. So all of this being said, in defining a new system. What we've said in the past is that solutions can also come from an IT or a, um, a business perspective. Now, we also need to know at this stage that the, the solution could also be a business solution or an organizational solution. So it, it, at this point in time, the business analyst doesn't necessarily need to um, produce a system system models or system requirements, they would then ultimately have to show the organization what needs to be done in order to change from a business perspective, such as the strategy or the processes or such, um, whatever, the, whatever the case um, they need to justify what decisions the organization should take in order to fix the problem or improve. Okay, so from this, from what we've discussed here, you should clearly understand sort of what a business analyst does and how they would use techniques, um, or you, would, you should have an overview of how they would use techniques, various techniques, in order to carry out their work. That being said, all of this can seem quite daunting when we listening about listening to system models and we listening to UML use case and how systems are built and such, especially, especially from an IT perspective. But just know that the work of a business analyst is extremely rewarding. And if you know enough knowledge and um, you, you know how to use these techniques, you can get yourself to a stage where you can, you can put yourself in a position where you can be extremely valuable. 
So you, you are ultimately the problem solver for an organization. Not only are you the problem solver, but you can, um, you, you then can tell the organization what they should do. Not only can you tell them what they should do, but you can also then show them or um, build the solution, like show them what exactly needs to be done for the developers to take take it forward and be able to um, uh, fix the problem or make any improvements to the system. So I hope this has now given you a bit of an insight into the work that a business analyst would do um, and to ensure that an organization ultimately stays healthy, it stays um, afloat, it's, it stays strong and it's in all, it, it allows it to fulfill its, its objectives and its purpose. So um, we can also say, but we also need to know that a business analyst could also be hired for different assignments where they could be using these techniques along the way to resolve some other problem or be defined in other, another specific area of business analysis work. But whatever the case may be, we also need to know that within this process that we've discussed here, this process is not, is not a definitive life cycle that business an analysis work will take. A business analyst could come in just for an assignment to engineer the requirements for a new system. They could be brought in on a contract just to investigate what the solution to the problem may be. They can come in at any point in time during this life cycle or this process that has been proposed here um, and use their techniques to, um, to resolve a particular problem or uh, get something done in an organization. So all of this being said, we move on to the next and final stage, which is ultimately answering our question, what is business analysis? We can say that ultimately business analysis is a service carried out by business analysts. This service is provided to organizations and businesses. And within the service, the business analysts use skills, knowledge and techniques to find areas where organizations can improve or find out what problems the organization has. They then, they then define and propose new solutions to improve the business or fix these problems and ensure that these solutions are aligned to the needs of the organization. They ensure that these solutions are viable and that a holistic view has been taken and then assist with the implementation of these new solutions. So from this, you should now have a good understanding of what business analysis is. And I hope that it has ultimately answered that question for you. So now we have come to the end of this episode and I'm just gonna answer a few questions that have come through from the session. Um, I can see here that Justin McPeak has ans asked what does a business analyst do in their day-to-day -day jobs? Um, well, on a day-to-day -day basis, a business analyst could be doing a number of things. As what we have seen in this session, we've, the, the, the role of a business analyst is varied. But a business analyst would usually be working in two contexts, if you can say that. And they, they may be working sort of on site, working with business staff, stakeholders, um, the executives of the company, talking to people, you know, using communication or facilitation techniques in order to extrapolate data and gather data from the organization. So they could be out and about talking to people, using, uh, setting up meetings and workshops and such in order to, to gather data. Now they could be also working in possibly an office context where they could be working in their own office or within, with a, in an office in a much larger organization or department using this data that they've gathered or using data that they've gathered from, that other people have gathered, processing this data, analyzing it, using techniques, building models, um, uh, you know, 
carrying out calculations, feasibility assessments and such in order to process this, this data to clearly define um, or you know define solutions, build solutions, find out find out what they can get from this information to ultimately fulfill the purpose of of improving a business or an organization. So I hope that has sort of covered that question. Um, we'll also look here at another if are there any other questions that have come through? We can see that there is a there's another question here from from Laura Palmer. She has asked, do business analysts get good salaries? So first of all, to a large degree, in all job roles, the salary in all jobs is, de is, is usually dependent on the skills, knowledge, and experience that you have, or the degree of all of this. So it, it, all, it all depends on how much you know or how good you are at what you do and for how long you've been doing it. But it's also based on where you are, so which country you are working in or which area of the country you're working in. You may be um, you may get a, a much higher salary if you're based in London rather than in the countryside, or you may be get a, a better salary working in Europe, um, sort of over you know an area such as Africa or such. But the if we can look here, we can there is some statistics on this or some some data. You can see here that there's a report from uh, Glassdoor. And the average salary for a business analyst in the UK is £42,906 per annum. So this figure can range from around 30000 for entry-level positions to 60000 for more experienced business analysts. But it's worth noting that this is just a rough estimate and actual salaries vary. And it's always a good idea to do your own research um, on salary information uh, specifically for business business analysis, which could be very specific to an industry or, or location. So you should, uh, my advice to you here, Laura, is just to get, um, do your own research and, and look at, um, you know, what you could potentially, which avenues you, or, or business areas you'll be going into to see what, what um, you could be getting. But that being said, the, the, the role of a business analyst is, a, is, a, is an extremely rewarding role. Um, it's a role that sort of modernizes you to a point where you on, you'll always be on the cutting edge of technology. You will always be valuable and because there will always be organizations and from now on out there will always be technology. And organizations will always need to resolve problems. And this area of business analysis um, or the field of work is growing and evolving over time. So by having a business analysis certification or, or learning about business analysis work, you can get yourself to a position where you can have an extremely valuable skill. You can, you, you, are, you will ultimately be the problem solver for organizations and businesses and also be able to align this with, with IT. So, yes, I'd say that it's an extremely rewarding ro role and anyone that is watching this webinar uh, and that, that hasn't sort of taken that step should look into it or even um, sort of learn some of the business analysis techniques in order to assist you in, in any um, careers that you take. So that being said, I just want to say that uh, thank you very much to all of you that have attended this webinar today. And I hope you have gained something from this and ultimately answered the question, what is business analysis? And um, if you have any other further questions, you can reach out to our IT, IT online learning representatives and, and they will be able to give you more information. But um, if not, if that's not the case, I'll see you in the next episode and I hope you have a good day. So cheers, bye. <laughs>